Welcome back guys. We are talking about DNA from the beginning. The primer set of experiments that lead to the foundation of modern biology. And we have seen the six experiments about the different you know, discovery of genes. You know, experiment beginning from the Gregor Mendel. And finally we have seen that genes are real thing provided by uh, the important experiments by Theodor Schwann. Now, in this video we are also going to talk about the experiment number seven which make this foundation of our cell biology very strong. We know, we knew that, you know, those factors are kind of things that are being transferred from one generation to another. We also knew that those factors are real. And we also have identified those factors to be present inside cell, inside living cell. Now, another thing that came into our mind is that how that factor is being transferred right so from one cell to another cell how it is being transferred and how the process is done and that thing was de delivered by Walter Walder Fleming Walder Fleming have identified and giving us the opportunity to understand how those factors are being transferred from one cell to another cell now what we can see here by Walder Fleming experiments said he knew that you know uh, he took he actually used uh, the, the organism or the model as salamander salamander was pretty common at that time and people are using salamander embryo for studying different things so we use salamander embryo use salamander embryo and actually uh, Walder Fleming used salamander embryo and what what he found there in the salamander embryo is that he took one cell of salamander embryo. It is having that dark dot, whatever is discovered by uh, Theodore Schwann there. Now that thing, after a certain amount of time, he found this to get the number to, to get increased, right? So once as it is cell one, after some times he found many, many cells there. So time is a factor after providing some time that one cell is producing many number of cells right and that actually uh, instigates some thought on Walder Fleming and what you want to find there is that what is going on and how one cell is becoming two right so what he did here there he took this embryo cell or embryonic cells because embryo cells are very rapidly doing this in very limited amount of time they are pro they are from very small to they are getting bigger and bigger so definitely the number is increasing or they are increasing in in structure in shape but what he found there they are increasing in number so how it is actually happening so what he found out he took this cell and he provided some time and during that time gap he used to monitor and look into those cells right and what he did there, in each cell, he applied some dye. Remember, the dye is very, very important to visualize that dark dot that is found uh, onto this cell, that is present onto the cell. And that is termed as the factor. Remember, the factor or the chromosome, right? At the time of the uh, Walder Fleming, he termed these factors, those dark thread-like structures, as chromatin threads, right? So he termed them chromatin, chromatin threads. And what he found that during those time gaps of the cell, these chromatin threads are more easily visible than they generally used to be. Right? That's the interesting fact. So what he did actually, he took the cell, he put some dye, and wait for some time and start to see the changes onto the cell. And what he found that the cell is actually increasing in number. So from one cell it is producing two cells, from two it is producing four and so on. It is exponentially increasing the number of cells. Now how they did it for these events, they look at the events actually. Walder Fleming look at the events sequentially and he prescribed a format. He pres prescribed the sequentiality of that event. And what was that? From the cell, he found out different phases. He found out different phases, right? For example, he termed those phases as interphase, prophase, 
मेटाफेज एनाफेज एंड टीलो फेज टर्म दिस डिफरेंट फेजेस एंड दो टर्मिनोलॉजी नो इंटरफेज मीन्स इंटरमीडिएट प्रो मीन्स अर्ली मेटा मीन्स आफ्टर सो इट टर्न ऑल दो नेम्स आफ्टर द डिफरेंट टाइम ड्यूरेशन बिकॉज ही टूक दो सेल्स ही लुक एट द टाइम ड्यूरेशन एंड लुक एट इट एंड एंड वाई इज नेमिंग ऑल दिस डिफरेंट फेजेस एंड द रीजन फॉर दैट वंस एट ईच डिफरेंट टाइम इंटरवल्स ही सॉ दो सेल्स ही विटनेस्ड सेवरल डिफरेंट चेंजेस इन साइड द सेल now those changes are different in different times so to 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 actually uh, mark those changes along with the situation of the process he termed all those phases for example once you look at this interface condition he found that there is a cell and whatever black dot used to present there which is termed as chromatin threads or chromatins where we supposed to see that uh, might be the factor is present or not we never know that at that time but we know that's that's the chromatin thread that is important for a cell to live now that thing is get going bigger and bigger and not only it is getting bigger it is getting brighter it is getting more condensed more visible under the microscope right and in that case interface he found that the cell is kind of is kind of resting so this is a kind of resting state but actually what he found later that actually during this time the number or the, or the amount of this genetic material so the number we never know the number of this those black dots not genetic material we now know that we never know that that time so those materials whatever is present inside the chromatin threads that they are increasing so ultimately in this resting phase this chromatin threads are increasing increasing in number right after that what we saw in this second phase or pro phase he found out that those fibers those threads or those chromatin threads they becoming more dense so they becoming denser and once they becoming denser they become visible so chromatin visible in microscope they becoming dense very very dense and in the metaphase state what we found actually during this this chromatin dense phase as the chromatin is becoming more and more dense we are visible it, it, that the more details of the chromatin is visible and during this detailing of the chromatin what we found actually we found the structure of the chromatin something like this and here they have something in between and the chromatids they find here are termed as sister chromatids and those because they are attached via point so they are sister to each other so they are termed as sister chromatid and the region with which they are attached with each other are termed as centromere so this is the structure purely visible clearly visible during the meta prophase stage late prophase stage after that during the meta phase what he found as the cell is ready and all of those chromatids actually start to be arranged in the midpoint of the cell they're kind of arranging in the middle point of the cell in a just they're producing or producing like a plate a fiber structure linear structure in in the middle region of the cell after this metaphase in the anaphase state what they found is that there are some thread like structures that are coming from both the ends of the cell from both the poles of the cell so poles of the cell it is coming from both the poles thread like structure and those thread like structures are attached to this centromere and then they are bound to that and anaphase he found this those those structures are kind of dragging those sister chromatids away right so he found that they are kind of dragging things away in the so let me 
erase that and draw it here in the inner phase the kind of this is the cell this chromatids are taken away towards two different poles towards opposite poles right and after that in the last phase or the telophase he found out that, that those chromatids are actually completely taken towards the opposite poles so in the cell he found out that those chromatids are taken opposite poles and they again kind of start to be less condensed and after that he found out the cells are kind of start to have a kind of cleavage from both this end and finally it leads to the generation of two small cells two daughter cells and those cells are also having that dark dot inside so the dark dot remember is nothing but that chromatin fiber that chromatin thread and that is also later termed as chromosome fiber or chromosome right so that is the important stage and this whole thing is termed as cell division that from one cell two cells are arising and this whole process is termed as mitosis or mitotic cell division so that's what you find here is mitosis and these are the stages of mitotic cell division or mitosis cell division right and that thing is prescribed this whole idea is provided by Walter Fleming and what we can see here in the, this inference we can say that each cells are produced from a pre-existing cell or each cells are originated from a pre-existing cell so each cells are originated from pre-existing cells that's the idea number seven that's the concept number seven right and that's a very important concept because once you find the cell the cells are capable of dividing the cells are capable of transferring the material the material in this case is this thread this chromatin thread later known as chromosome so definitely if the factor provided by Mendel is something which is transferred from one generation to another generation chromosome can be something which is holding those factor but we never know that for sure then but we can say it might have that factor in it right so let's see whether it is having that or not in the next round thank you